making money on it, but we did, you know, we won a won an award on it. Hey, you got to make money with these. Uh, I know. Fucking awards don't mean it. I got, awards, I got awards coming out of my asshole here. Why the fuck don't you get over here and you get interviewed? <laughs> I was in the insurance business. And I insured Saudi's restaurant. And naturally, with all the actors and actresses, I ran into a fellow who used to come in here all the time, Jack Kirkland, who wrote Tobacco Road. And he did uh, Mandingo. And he was trying to get it on Broadway. And I saw it, and we decided to do Mandingo. And then we wound up with uh, Dennis Hopper, Miss Hayward, who was Margaret Sullivan's daughter. We got great reviews. And after about a year, the newspapers went on strike. And I came up with the idea of doing a radio show from one of the bigger hotels. I had everybody there, John Wayne, Margaret Hamilton, any movie star that you could think of appeared on a radio show. And then I went to work for Bill Dahl, who was my press agent on Mandingo, and who was one of the great Broadway press agents of all time. And he had this company, Asta Films, who just came out with La Dolce Vita. And sure enough, the thing got mobbed. Then I went to work for uh, Eli Lando. He had uh, a partner by the name of Herbert Steinman, who eventually became my partner. And they did The Pawnbroker, Loves of a Blonde, all of which I worked on. After Landau, I became the head of public relations for the Rizzoli Company. And he had some great movies. He had Juliet of the Spirits by Fellini, Mondo Cani, Africa Adio, we went to Cannes during the Cannes Film Festival. I got hooked on Cannes. Herbert was there, and we'd go around looking for movies and stuff like that. In our travels, we bought a few of them. One of the big ones was Love and Anarchy. It was done by Lena Wertmuller, who was unknown in this country. She had Giancarlo Giannini with her. This was a great movie. Let's bring it to the United States and bring him to the United States. And sure enough, we did. We got every cover of every magazine possible. I mean, I didn't understand a word what they were talking about, but it was obvious this was a great movie. And we made a deal. And we got the movie in perpetuity. As a matter of fact, uh, Lena and I correspond with each other on Facebook. And she's got all her Italian friends inviting me for pizza or whatever the hell they're eating over there. Billy Silver, Della Baxter. I usually stayed at the Majestic Bar and I entertained there. And I used to give away silver dollars all the time. Is your silver dollar? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Every time I went through customs, they'd see this big pile of silver dollars. They couldn't figure out what it was. So one year, I put them in a little suitcase and everything. Some son of a bitch robbed it on me. It was a real pain, because people always loved them when they saw it. When they saw me, it was only a silver dollar. I mean, uh, you know, you usually pay $20 for a tip to get in a place. Here I am getting away with a silver dollar. Had a lot of fun there, boy. They had a screening for Outrageous. I didn't like the movie, but I'm overhearing the critics talking to each other. Boy, what a great film. Back and forth, I said. Where was I? Was I asleep? I remember Chuck Champlin from the Los Angeles Times. He loved the film. I said, there's gotta be something to this. So I wound up, we got the, we got the film pretty, pretty cheap. And of course, it was a big hit. It was an important film at the time, you know. It went over big in New York, that's for sure. They had a little casino in the back of the hotel. So I'm with Mario Puzo. Mario wrote The Godfather. He's playing roulette, I'm playing blackjack. And I'm sitting next to a guy, his name was Richard Rubenstein. The dealer deals out the cards. 
And the fellow says to me, he said, boy, I'd love to double down, but I don't have any money. So I said, let me see your cards. He had 11, the dealer had a six, which was a natural to beat the house. I gave it only one, paid me back, and then ran into him in the lobby of the hotel. He says, you know, I have a movie that we can't finish because we don't have enough money. So I said, well, when we get back to New York, you'll show it to us. I had no idea what we were gonna see. So we go over and see it. Movie starts. It's about zombies. Dawn of the Dead by George Romero. Now Herbert, a beautiful man that he was. We're walking down the aisle and he says to me, Billy, it's a piece of crap, but it's gonna make a fortune. I says, you're kidding. He says, no. He says, let's get together with this guy. So Herbert and I each put in 104,000. And then of course, who figures? The thing is a tremendous hit. I'm still getting checks after 30 some years. It was a fluke. And I hate to tell you this, but I have yet to see the whole movie all the way through because I closed my eyes on most of the movie because zombies are not my thing. I'll probably wind up one. George Romero was one of the nicest guys. He was like a big teddy bear. He was a beautiful guy and a very talented director. In fact, Rogers said it's the greatest movie of that genre that he's ever seen. The head of CBS, a guy by the name of Wessler, did a movie about Khan. It was the worst. So I said to myself, I can do better than this. This is Cannes. For 11 months a year, it's a peaceful fishing town in the south of France. Every May, it turns into a mob scene from the Day of the Locusts. This is the Cannes Film Festival. So I went to Lou Grade. They owned the TV stations. And I told them I could get Rex Reed. I could get Roger Ebert. He's a beautiful guy. He's never let me down, and of course, I never let him down. Kathleen Carroll, Richard Corliss. I mean, the top critics of the country to do the interviews. Uh, for best film, then Kagamusha, which is the Akira Kurosawa film. And I put every... Everybody was kidding me because I put everybody up at the Majestic. Now we're talking serious money for the rooms because anybody that's got a camera and stays in cotton, they're probably sleeping under the boardwalk. And here I am with my crew at the Majestic Hotel, the top hotel in Khan. We had everybody in this. We had McCartney. When we got back, we finished it off. It was the highest rated show in England. Now we're talking 25, 30 years ago. And I decided to revive it. Just last year. Make a DVD out of it and everything else like that. If you notice the DVD, it's beautifully boxed. To me, it was done by a genius. By mistake, I meet this genius. Matt Glasson. I said, look, I don't know the first thing about this, but it was obvious he knew his stuff. And I saw a movie that he did called Love Stalk. Hey there, hey there, hey there. Sorry to bother you, I was just curious. Did you happen to see what just happened outside? And I liked it so much. I said, well, can I have something to do with this? Or you need any help or anything? Everything is there, it's good acting. Got a few new people in there that are probably gonna go places. You know, it's tough breaking into a business, which is half of the battle. A guy could come out with Ben-Hur if he don't know his way around. He'll be riding the horses up in the Claremont stable on 89th Street. But this thing looks like it can take off. And as a matter of fact, I told him after our first meeting, I said, you're on your way, pal. I mean, you're gonna be something in this business and I will do anything to make sure that this movie 
It's a success. You know, my name happens to mean a lot, especially for a couple of broads. I'm here to do whatever I can for the movie. And I wish him all the success in the world. Nice, uh, sounds good to me. I'm retired now. I'm living off my laurels and the zombies. I didn't do it for the money, even though we did pretty good with it. It was a labor of love. I had my name on the top, Billy Baxter Presents. And I'm a vain son of a bitch. And uh, I got something to leave my son besides a couple of old watches. How am I doing? You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing great, Billy. You thought it was easy. <laughs>